So you might have thought to yourself that unethical experiments were largely a thing of the past. However, that's not quite the case. This video goes over the UCLA, the University of California, Los Angeles, schizophrenia experiments. Schizophrenia is a severe long-term mental health condition and it has a range of different psychological symptoms. Doctors often describe it as a type of psychosis. That means that a person suffering from schizophrenia may not always be able to distinguish their own thoughts and ideas from the grounded reality. The progress of schizophrenia varies widely. It's often marked by auditory hallucinations such as hearing voices, depression, violent thoughts, impulsive behavior, and even sometimes violent behavior. Such schizophrenic episodes can alternate with periods of relative normalcy. And there are several antipsychotic drugs that control most of the symptoms. Even patients who do use the medication, however, can relapse into a schizophrenic psychotic state. At the same time, some patients who recover from an initial schizophrenic episode can go without medication and never relapse. So because so much is still really unknown about schizophrenia, such as how to treat it and what the correct type of medication could be, continued studies on schizophrenia are essential. And that is where our study comes in. From around 1983, a psychologist called Keith Nochtelein and psychiatrist Michael Gitlin from the UCLA Medical Center started what is now considered to be a controversial study into the mental processes of schizophrenic patients. They titled their study, rather unimaginatively, The Developmental Processes in Schizophrenic Disorders Project. And it is a longitudinal study, which means it carries on over a long period of time. And it studies schizophrenic patients who have recently had a first episode of psychosis. Specifically, they were looking into the ways in which sufferers of schizophrenia relapse. So essentially, this study had two parts to it. Some participants got injected with Proloxin, which is an antipsychotic, and other participants received a placebo. So placebo is a, is a nothing drug, it has no effect, but the participants who receive the placebo don't know that they're receiving a placebo. So they think that they could probably be receiving the Proloxin, right? So every two weeks, patients were given a dose of this Proloxin drug, they were exposed to different factors, which the researchers thought might trigger an episode. So those, those participants who remained, as I, and I quote, relatively stable, were taken off all medication for up to 18 months. One of the reasons that the researchers wanted to see if schizophrenic patients could live a life without taking antipsychotic medication, if they knew what could trigger a psychotic episode, was because the drugs themselves had quite nasty side effects, such as potentially uncontrolled shaking, blurred vision, excessive weight gain, sexual issues due to hormonal imbalances, dry mouth, slow response time, and severe fatigue, as well as uncomfortable restlessness. The study itself has been criticized for not sufficiently protecting the patients the participants who had schizophrenic episodes in the event of schizophrenic symptoms returning and also didn't clearly determine the point at which the patient should be treated again. In the participation consent form, which is what a participant would read through and consent to, it mentioned that if I do show a significant return of symptoms, I understand that the clinic staff will use active medication again to improve my condition. However, 23 out of the 50 patients who were taken off their medication completely suffered severe relapses. And one of these patients was Antonio Lamadrid. Tony was a freshman at UCLA when he had his first psychotic break or his first schizophrenic episode. After this occurred, he became part of the UCLA project and he was one of the 50 patients slash participants who was taken off of his medication. After this happened, he began to talk a great deal about suicide with his brother, uh, as well as other family members. And sadly, Tony ended up committing suicide by jumping off a nine floor building. Despite having been open about his suicidal state of mind and supposedly while under the study's watch, 
though it's arguable that if Tony was not part of this experiment and was not taken off of his medication, then this might not have occurred. Indeed, his death led to a federal investigation that essentially concluded that UCLA had violated aspects of informed consent, and this was because the research subjects were not told how severe their possible relapses might be. So while studies such as that done by Nochtelein and Gitlin are important, I think it's vital that we can't compromise our ethics and put patients at risk. And that's all for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, drop a like and subscribe to the channel.